This video will show you how to make a 3D printer rack with enclosures to house multiple 3D printers. Acrylic paneling will be used, and the printers will sit on aluminum plates. The design involves multiple 3D printed parts for different practical situations, and the amount of creativity in this project is mind-blowing. To help you follow along, the model will pop out, and the parts that I am working on will be highlighted in red. This is part 2 of the 3D printer rack build series. If you haven't watched part 1, you will be able to find it in my channel. At the same time, part 3 is already on the way. There are a few last holes to drill since I prepared the parts. To get accurate drilling, this 3D printed jig is perfect for the job. Throughout all my builds, mechanical 3D printing helped in so many ways to prep, drill, and to assemble. I'll make a video in the future on all the 3D printed jigs and how to use them. To hold down the aluminum plates, two different profiles were used. The plates are exactly 5mm thickness, and therefore it will sit flush on the 2020 profile. To get it dead center when tightening, I made these jigs to help hold things down while I work on it. Alignment is critical in every part of this project, and later on when we install the doors, you will understand why. After some heavy planning, I figured the best way is to assemble this structure from the side up, beginning from the enclosure section. I call these flush plates. These helped me ensure the joints are flushed face to face during assembly, which is one of the hardest thing to do when I really need precision. You can find the usage of flush plates in all my other videos. In all my previous projects, drawer slides were all mounted onto aluminum profiles rather than wood. In this way, I can control the precise location. Ball spring T-nuts were used specifically, to keep the positioning intact, should I ever need to alter the location of the drawer slides again. Another 3D printed jig is used here to help center the drawer slides in place before tightening down. To perfectly flush this joint, I'll show you here how to use two flush plates to do that. To integrate acrylic panels into the structure, I will need these panel holders, which is made specifically to do this job. I am making the enclosure rather airtight at all sides, except for the doors, to trap the printing fumes within. And I ordered custom cut acrylic panels that will fit exactly into the frame, closing up the bottom tier.
Throughout the project, I added slot covers as soon as I can, because many areas might be inaccessible as I continue to build. And in part 3, electric wires will be hidden in the slot covers, to add lights to the chamber. For the back panels, there is a custom cut hole. I have yet to design the exhaust system, but it will be done in part 3. The panels were accurately cut, and they fit exactly the way I modeled the design. Thickness of the panel turned out to be 3.3 mm exactly. If you are building this too, choose your materials at approximately 4 mm or lesser. At the very bottom of the structure, I added large corner brackets for structural integrity. These joints are double jointed, extremely strong once tightened down. To help secure down the aluminum plates, I inserted ball spring T-nuts into the 2020 profiles at the approximate location. This method helps to roughly align the, the holes for fastening later. Most of the joinery chosen in this project will be concealed, hidden from view, except for a drilled hole to access the bolt within. This is the center divider, which I assembled off camera. This divider separates the two chambers right down the middle, and each chamber will need its own exhaust system. And now, to close off the four sides of the panel, I need to slowly work each bolt down, gripping the panel tightly into the T-slot. This is the moment that I wished I had three hands.
the next drawer slide arm will have to be installed using a different method, which will achieve the same result. And by using the same jig, it is tightened down to its precise intended location. Casters will be required. I need to move this structure around to access the back, for electrical and exhaust maintenance. And now, we arrived at the top of the rack. For this part, a three-way cube connector will be used. And because of that, we can assemble the top platform completely before attaching it to the frame. The last aluminum plate will go on now. For this project to come together this well, an insane level of precision had taken place, in every step of the way. And there's more to come in this video. We are going to assemble the doors now. These panels are clearly laser cut, that some of the offcuts are still there. I designed and printed my own hinges. Each door will have three hinges. To hold an acrylic door that is of 6 mm thickness. To achieve a smooth opening door, I added one washer for each hinge. This way, there will be no squeaky doors, and there will be no plastic rubbing against plastic, and no lubricant will be needed. When creating the 3D model, a lot of time was spent planning the, the size and length of the bolts to use. It's pretty amazing how every part fit together nicely, exactly how it was designed. These 3D printed parts have a dual purpose. Firstly, I do not wish to have dangerously sharp edges, which is a potential risk for the user. Secondly, they have to hold the magnets that hold the doors closed. Magnets were simply applied with superglue. And I easily matched the polarity with this simple method. From this view, you can now understand how this door has no sharp corners. Attaching the door is fairly simple. The hammerhead T-nuts will be sufficient enough to take the weight of the door. And by using a spacer as such, I can lift the door before I tighten down everything. The other magnets will be installed at this location. These parts will hold the door shut. In my experience, I have done many different doors before, but honestly, these are by far the best doors I have ever made.
Now let's head on to assemble the aesthetic side panels. Six 3D printed clips will hold up each panel. The holes are tapped through, using this M5 bit, to accept M5 bolts later on. And I am using this simple jig to help drill the panels accurately, without measurement. These are aesthetic panels I made at the workshop, which will close up the sides, so that we do not see the drawer box from the sides. At the workshop, I already done up the huge drawer. All we need to do is to slot it in, and check for precision and accuracy. For the custom cut holes on the aluminum plates, I printed these caps to close them up. And for this section, I think it's better to have my V-Minion sit here, while I install the electronics on the back panel of the enclosure. For the chamber lights, the parts are already being prepared, getting ready for part 3. If you haven't subscribed, you might want to do so now. There is still a lot more work that I wish to do for this rack, but I will need time to design it all out. For now, you might want to watch part 1 of the build first, where all the materials were prepared. I shall see you there.